Chapter 34 Reputation Sensei wasn't going to catch me off guard today, I decided. I arrived at class five minutes early, eyes peeled and ready to fight. I had already conditioned my mind to understand that Sensei might pose as my enemy and that if he did, I would fight him like any unknown attacker from the streets. But once I got inside the dojo, Sensei had a card table stacked with hundreds of cards. I tried to switch tracks in my head. I knew he was about to play some kind of mind game. Besides, the lights were off and it seemed like he wasn't even there. Of course he was. Otherwise, how would I have gotten inside of the open front door of the dojo? I walked around the perimeter slowly, poised for his sneak attack. As I walked past his closed bathroom door, I figured he was just using the bathroom and I was making something out of nothing. I walked over to the light switch. Before I could flip it up, he came swooping down and was standing right there in front of me. It is a common mistake, he said in place of a greeting. People tend to never look up. A ninja must always look up and in every direction, even beneath his feet. I guess he was hanging there on the ceiling in the dark like a bat. I knew ninjas could do these types of maneuvers, but I also thought it was because they were usually small-sized Asian men. I didn't see myself as being able to hang on to the ceiling hidden away at six foot one unless he had some way to show and convince me that I could. Ohayo, Sensei-san, I said, offering him the Japanese morning greeting. Ohayo, Gakusei. He returned the greeting to me, the student. In ancient times, armies of warriors had rules of confrontation that they abided by. Most would rather die than break the rules of war as they understood them and as they were trained to follow them. But this is not the way of the ninja. Other warriors pride themselves on confronting their enemy face to face and fighting honorably. But this is not a ninja's honor. A ninja is usually the outnumbered, the underdog, the underestimated. Therefore, he must fight in such a way where winning remains a possibility. One of those ways of fighting is invisibility. It would be hard for an enemy to fight what he cannot see and did not foresee. A ninja must be a master of strategy. A ninja, unlike the ancient warrior who loved confrontation, open combat, spectators, and ceremonies to cheer him on, always seeks to hide his plan and execute his plan in secrecy whenever possible. It is not above a ninja to stab an enemy in his back, Sensei said in a calm but deadly serious tone, or to poison an enemy in such a way that he kills himself with his own hand by a substance slipped into his drink or food or carefully place on his personal belongings or to set a trap for his enemy after studying his usual movements and habits. I listened very carefully, seeing Sensei from an angle I never looked at him before. The object is to win at all costs. The meaning of the word ninja is one who remains alive, one who preserves his life, the one who plans and fights and struggles through any circumstance, no matter how difficult and remain standing at its conclusion. Therefore, in this complicated world, a true ninja of today's time would have to be a careful but extremely swift thinker who uses everything within his reach to achieve his goal. A thinker, I repeated. Yes, he confirmed. This is why a fool could not be offered this knowledge which I am offering you. A fool doesn't think matters through. A fool does not know the difference between his enemies and his friends. So with these skills that I am teaching you, a fool would destroy everyone, including himself. Your ability to think through situations is what gives you a great advantage and a great civility. You can kill, but you are not eager to kill. You won't kill your friends or family, but you will kill your enemies, and you will be a thousand percent certain who your enemies are because you have been thinking and watching and observing them all along. But what about a man who makes himself my enemy on the spot without warning? I asked. This is not probable. In most cases, your enemy has been there all along, just as I was here in this room all along. Your enemy has most likely warned you, 
through his words or gestures or his energy even. You just fail to recognize the warning signs. You just fail to see him as you fail to see me, Sensei said calmly. I didn't like this word failure that Sensei had thrown around in my last two weapons sessions. I did not want to be called a failure. I did not want to actually be a failure either. After his words, Sensei taught me how to size up a room whenever I entered it. He had me search the back room of the dojo. At first, I thought it was useless. Other than the card table and chair, which had never been in the room before, the room was empty. But rather than fail, I took a much, much closer look. After an hour, I discovered the secrets of the construction of the room. I found the door in the ceiling that Sensei dropped through. I found an unmarked exit that appeared to be a smooth wall. I found a floorboard in the corner that, when pressed at the right point, led to a downstairs closet I never knew existed after seven years in the dojo. Is there anything else? Sensei questioned me. I had been observing and searching an empty room for more than an hour. Other than the dummy and items Sensei had stored in his closet, I was certain I located everything. Do you think your enemy will give you the luxury of time to search his place? Of course not, I responded. Then you must become more swift with your observations. Since they pulled something from below the silver card table, it was daytime and the lights were bright, but I could not see what he was maneuvering. He tossed it. You would have been dead. His concealed mock shuriken hit my chest and fell to the floor. When I checked underneath the card table, there were two real knives taped beneath them. There was no way to see them without crawling directly under the table. I guess I was becoming more aware and alert than ever before. As I was being trained, I began to look at every item in the room no matter how small it was. I began to think of how each item could be converted into a weapon or a defense. Of course I noticed Sensei's rope hanging on the wall, but that was too obvious. I am certain he left it out there purposely to encourage and challenge me. He did well because I planned to tie him up to a chair as he did me. But I would have to work on my technique and execute it when he least expected it. The second two hours of weapons class had me tight. After a strenuous workout, Sensei ordered me to take a seat at the card table. He instructed me to build a house from the hundreds of cards he had there. My mind and heart was already sped up from the morning challenges. I did not want to slow myself all the way down to build a house of cards. Besides, I didn't want to be an artist or architect. I am a fighter and a businessman. I sat there staring at the cards. Do not leave until you have utilized every card and built a house which is standing, Sensei instructed me. Then he walked out of the training area into another room, probably his private office. Even bricks are held together by cement. I thought to myself, how would I build a house of cards, no glue, no nothing? It took a half hour for me sitting there to move beyond my anger. Sensei was right when he said, anger blocks success because anger shuts down a person's thoughts which paralyzes a person's skills. I could have got up and left, I didn't. I picked up two cards to see how I could lean one against the other and make them both be standing when I removed my hands. Four hours later, I was still there, stuck in weapons training with no food, no water, and no break for six hours total. I had to block out the sound of the fighters in the main room of the dojo. I put the last card on my four-story structure, hoping it wouldn't cause the entire roof to cave in. There had been 2,000 cards in total. I eased my chair away from the table slowly and carefully. I walked out of the room to let Sensei know I had completed the task. I was ready to go. Sensei walked back into the back room where he trained me. He stood looking at the house of cards from a distance. He asked me, what does this house symbolize? Tired, I wanted to respond by saying, I don't know, but I didn't want to fail or cause this session to drag on. So I thought about it instead. Effort, I responded, okay he said, seeming to want me to use more words in my explanation. Discipline, I added. I see, he said, apparently not satisfied yet. 
patience, and respect. I tried to add more words to my tired explanation. He just grunted instead of using any words to let me know if I had gotten it right. Hard work takes careful effort, I said. It could be, he said, moving towards the table to take a closer look. As he got to the table, his leg bumped the edge and the whole 2000 card house collapsed. He turned to me and said, the house symbolizes your reputation. It takes forever to build a good one. It takes a second to blow it all away.